You think every car should be electric? Well, here are some inconvenient facts you probably don't know. This is part two of our series on electric cars. We keep hearing. The future of the auto industry is electric, electric, and battery technology. Battery technology. That's key because we need to store the electric power. But storing large amounts of energy in batteries has a problem. Batteries are really lousy at storing energy. They leak energy constantly. They leak, and they don't hold a lot. Physicist Mark Mill says electric cars are great, but... Oil begins with a huge advantage over the chemicals that are in a battery. Oil has about 5,000% more energy in it per pound. And we see this in electric cars. Electric cars' battery weighs 1,000 pounds. It's what the battery weighs. It's replacing about 80 pounds of gasoline. All right, you're talking today, but the batteries are going to get smaller and better. They've gotten way more powerful, long-lasting, and affordable. All of this is just a prologue to what the next batteries are going to do. I can't wait. Will they be something like the one Iron Man has? Yeah, I can fly. Iron Man with the, uh, the power pack that he puts in his chest or the Terminator. Could happen. Things improve. Engineers are really good at making things better, but they can't make them better than the laws of physics permit. That will never happen in any place except comic books. That's inconvenient fact four. Miracle batteries, powerful enough to replace fossil fuels, are a fantasy. Because nature is not nice to humans, we store energy for when it's going to be really cold or really hot. The people who imagine an energy transition would want to build windmills and solar panels and store all that energy in batteries. But you do the arithmetic and you find out you need to build about a hundred trillion dollars worth of batteries to store the same amount of energy that Europe has in storage now for this winter. And it would take the world's battery factories about 400 years to manufacture that many batteries. 400 years? Politicians don't mention that. That leads to another problem the politicians don't mention. They say every car will be electric. California will require all new cars sold to be zero emission vehicles. If that were somehow to happen. That means a lot more electric vehicles drawing power from the grid. But the grid is already limited. So limited that last summer, California's governor told people, don't use your electric car. Asking residents to avoid charging their EVs in order to conserve energy. Roughly speaking, you have to uh, double your electric grid to move the energy out of gasoline into the electric sector. No one is planning to double the electric grid in California, so there'll be rationing. Rationing. When there isn't enough electricity, cities will simply turn some of the power off. That's inconvenient fact five. We just don't have enough electricity for all electric cars. And we'll have even less of it if we try to get all our electricity from renewable energy like wind and solar. Our president says, we're going to achieve a carbon pollution-free electric sector by the year 2035. And gullible media believe it. It's amazing that all these smart people and supposed leaders say these things. It's upsetting. It really has been an extraordinary accomplishment of propaganda, and there's no other word for it. Oh! Oil and gas is going to take everything we know and love. Wind and solar, renewable versus oil and gas. It's, it's almost infantile. It's really, it, it's distressing because it's so silly. Because even if engineers invent much better wind turbines and solar panels and power lines and batteries. You're still drilling things. You're still digging up stuff. You're still building machines that wear out. We're still driving big trucks, whether you drill a gas well or build a wind turbine. It's, it's all the same, really. It's just big machines to make lots of energy for humanity. It's not magical transformation. In many respects, the parts that aren't different are worse, unfortunately. The politicians are making us pay more to do things that hurt the environment. You're up going back to coal. Burning coal in homes and open stoves because they're so afraid they're going to freeze this winter. People fearful of winter shortages wait for days and nights to stock up on heating fuel. Lines going for miles in Poland. These are people picking up coal to take home to be sure they won't freeze this winter. This is crazy. So what we've done now is had our energy systems designed by bureaucrats instead of by engineers. 
And what we're getting is worse energy, more expensive energy, uh, higher environmental impacts. That's what we're doing. As for electric cars, I like them. Maybe I'll buy one, but I won't pretend it'll make me some kind of environmental hero. There'll be lots more electric cars in the future, and there should be, because that'll reduce demand for oil, which is a good thing. But when you do the math, the arithmetic on the scales of demand to operate a society with billions of people, with five or six billion people who are, live in poverty, we can't imagine. When you want to give them a little bit of what we have, the energy demands are off the charts big. We're going to need everything. Everything includes fossil fuel. We hope you like this two-part series. If you want to help us make more videos like that, click that button.